Earth, you got a copy. I don't know if you've had your copy and correct grammar yet this morning, but if you haven't, let's get some in you. So, the question is, why is L-Y such a poisonous suffix, such a nasty particle of negation? Okay, so this is the, the, the common thing that I run into when I ask questions like this, and it doesn't matter what it pertains to, whether it's L-Y or anything else, it all comes down to parsing things and actually putting the work in and doing it. Whenever you have a doubt as to what a word means or a particle means, look it up. Just look it up. You have the same tools at your fingertips that I do. If you have the internet, and the internet is a great place to find these things out. You just have to take the time to do it. Yes, I understand. It's a lot of work. It is. But if this is what you want to do, you got to put the work in. You got to get the closure for yourself so that you have it here as well as here. My statement. Roddy, Rodney James Vane's Lolly. Certify, this is the only man that teaches quantum grammar. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Rodney, I appreciate it. And I appreciate your participation on this channel. Your comments bring value to this channel. And I appreciate that. So what I'm saying is, is you have to do your own research. You have to look this stuff up. Without fail, I'll ask people, you know, if, if we're syntaxing, like in a workshop or something, I'll say, Hmm, okay, you syntax this as, as a, a four. Why is that? Is it tangible or is it non-tangible? And then the student will say, well, I think it's, it's like, no, 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 no. I'm asking you if it's tangible or non-tangible. I'm not asking you what you think or what you feel. I need a continuance of the evidence as to why it's tangible or non-tangible. You bank the value. You have to back up what you did. You can't kind of waffle around, be like, well, I feel like it means, no, no, no. Try to do that with a, with a police officer or with a judge or, or with some other Vasily. Try to do that with them. See what they do. The minute you show any kind of unsurety or uncertainness about yourself or a lack of confidence, boom, you're done. So if, if you know, and I do this in my workshops too, you know, the more advanced students, I'll put them on the spot. And uh, it's kind of like when you're learning a martial art or boxing or something, when you actually have to get in there and spar and, and you're actually having punches thrown at you and you're, you're moving and learning to move in those situations. If you can't deal with that situation in a practice environment, if you can't deal with me asking you for closure in this type of scenario, then you're probably, it's safe to say, not ready to take this out in the real world and use it there. That's why you got to get your licks in here or with another tutor or who, whatever you do, you know, get some practice in before you go out and actually use it. It's, it's better to get your lumps in in a safe environment than to go out there and not know what you're doing and get your lumps in there. Because when you get your lumps in there, they hurt a lot more. Trust me. I've downloaded a couple of David Wins and Mark's work. Uh, okay, so we're going to go into the LY now. Here we go. LY is a suffix. And first, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about tangibility versus non tangibility. LY is a suffix that can be attached to a tangible contract word and it poisons it to the state of non-tangibility. So for example, if you have a word like live or live, L-I-V-E, and then you attach the L-Y to that word, live, L-I-V-E, which is tangible contract, now becomes non-tangible contract because the L-Y poisons it. 
And of course, you have to know about these terms, tangible and non-tangible, which you can learn by going on to my syntax playlist on this channel. Got over 300 videos on here. It's up to you to study them if you so choose. But you will find closure on tangibility versus non-tangibility and how you can determine that. I provide very consistent mechanics on identifying tangibility or non-tangibility in words. So, so far we have the suffix ly, which is so poisonous that it will poison a tangible contract word into a non-tangible contract word. So just about any word that you see with ly at the end as a suffix, as a suffix, as a suffix is going to be non-tangible. Okay? Non-tangible. Why? Why is ly so poisonous that it can poison a tangible contract word into a non-tangible contract word. How? How does that happen? Does anybody know? Okay, so. L-Y. Who here in this chat, since I originally said that, and I'm speaking, actually referring specifically to Jason, who has looked it up? Who has looked up L-Y in an etym etymology dictionary? Who has looked it up and researched it? Just in the time that I suggested to do it during this workshop. I suggested it about 5, 10 minutes ago. Actually, 15 minutes ago. Or is everybody just waiting for me to give it to them? <laughs> Goodness gracious. I'm going to see if I can put it up on my phone and show you the screen. And you should be able to read it. I guess it's not going to appear backwards to you or any, anything. So, like on my phone, I have all my dictionaries and everything in one place. Okay, here we go. So I just looked up LY in an etymology dictionary. And this is what we got. Okay, so everything is backwards on here to me. I'm looking at it backwards, so I'm going to have to turn my phone back around to read some of it. So as you can see, I looked up hyphen ly. That is what I looked up because I want to look it up as a suffix, hyphen ly, meaning it's a word-forming element that's attached onto something else. So it says suffix forming adjectives from nouns having qualities of, of the form or nature of, manly, lordly, appropriate to, fitting, suited to, bodily, earthly, daily. Doesn't sound too bad right now, does it? Right? It's a basic modifier. Doesn't say anything about tenses or anything, so it's not negating the now space in any way, is it? Irregularly descended from Old English hyphen L-I-C from Proto-Germanic hyphen L-I-K-O Old Frisian L-I-K Dutch L-I-J-K Old High German hyphen L-I-H, Dutch, did I say that? I already said that. Old Norse related to L-I-K-O-M, appearance, form. 
Here we go. Old English, L I C H, corpse, body. C L I C H. Okay. I'm going to stop right there because someone just came into the room that I think I know who they are, and they claim uh, syntax knowledge. So I'm going to ask them, Syntax Rap Freestyle Academy, why is LY a particle of negation? That is the topic of this mini class. So I'm going to ask you, because I think you do claim to have some knowledge of correct sentence structure. Why is L-Y a particle of negation? Why does it mean no? Why is it a poison suffix? What is your closure on that? Syntax rap freestyle academy. Yes, it modifies, but why? Why is it a particle of negation? Why does it mean no specifically? Yes, it alters the continuance of the evidence. Why does it alter the continuance of the evidence? What's the reason? Specifically. Why does it alter it and how does it alter it? Placement. Why is the placement important? What if the name I was given ends in L-Y? Well, we uh, we navigate with the with the balance of the honor and the grace. So if you're given a name, that's the name you're giving. You didn't choose the name, did you? No, probably not. So it is what it is. With the balance of the honor and the grace, that's not a particle of negation in a name. What I'm talking about and what I said earlier, which I don't think you were here, so how would you know this? So I'll just repeat it. L-Y, when used as a suffix, is a poisonous particle of negation when used as a suffix. If it's part of a name, it wouldn't apply. Placement is important because the way words are used to form sentences is a core of syntax. That is correct, but you still have not told me why L-I means, L-Y means no. You have not told me why. Specifically, it means no. Like for example, L-Y, the reason that L-Y means no is different than the reason why E-D means no and the reason R-E means no. It's different. And I'm just asking you for your closure on it. And while you've told me some of the things that contribute to what it does, you're not telling me why it's a particle of negation. I was just about to share the why. Then you popped on and I stopped because I wanted to see where you were at with it. Specifically, because I know that you have made claims of, of grammar knowledge, so I'm just seeing where you're at with it. Also, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say this. When I look at a word like family, okay, family, I don't think of family as non-tangible contract because L-Y isn't necessarily a suffix in the word family. So that's sort of an exception to this whole L-Y thing. That's why I specifically said L-Y when used as a suffix is a particle of negation. Maybe why is because of the user preference for a certain rule. No, that is not correct. Because you have not identified the rule yet. You have not even identified anything about why. I mean, yes, of course, user preference uh, figures into it because if I just way, and you prefer to do it another, and we don't come to a joinder on it, then we're speaking babble to each other, 
and we're not going to contract. It's that simple. But what I'm sharing with you, what I'm about to share with you, is a continuance of the evidence that comes onto the geometric level plane that anyone can certify for themselves. It's not because I prefer it that way. It's because I can show you where it comes from. I know where it comes from, and I can show that to you. LY is your standing of why. Stop withholding your talent, Jason. Syntax Rap Freestyle Academy. Now, I don't understand where you're going with this direction. Because if you're familiar with my channel, you know that if someone comes on here and starts telling other people, it doesn't matter if it's me or anyone else, what they should or shouldn't do, that's a trespass. That's an assumption on your part because we can only make claims for ourselves. And you're also changing the, the direction of the conversation, perhaps to deflect away from the question that I asked you. I don't know if that's what you're doing, but it certainly does seem like it because you have not answered my question. You have neither answered it, nor have you said, no, Jason, I don't know. Please share with me your closure on why LY is a poison uh, suffix. You have not said any of those things. And this is the psychological test that I give people to find out who's serious and who's not, who's pretending and who's humble. And that's why I'm giving you the opportunity to say something, because I am also humble. And I'm willing to learn if you have something to teach me about L.Y. Share it, please. Thanks. Syntax Rap Freestyle Academy. There are 300 plus videos on this channel that you can share. I've already shared it. I've already put thousands of hours into these videos and shared it with the public. Okay? So it's already been done. It's already done, been shared, Syntax Rap Academy. <laughs> All right, on. No, you didn't answer it. Why is LY a particle of negation? Why does it mean no? Show me why it means no. Specifically, point me to a source that can certify what you're saying, which you haven't said. So I'm just going to move on now. All right. So to move on, to continue on, the reason why LY is such a particle of, nega uh, particle of negation that is so poisonous that it will poison a tangible contract word, and I did, okay, he's out of here. The question that Syntax Rap Academy could not answer and would not answer is the reason why LY means no. I'm going to point you to exactly where you can go. And here's the reason. That is the continuance of the evidence for why LY is such a poisonous suffix in that it will poison a tangible contract word into a non-tangible contract word. It kills tangibility, literally, in a grammatical sense. That is why. That is why an LY word will either be syntaxed as an adverb a verb or a pronoun, but will never be syntaxed as an adjective because the LY poisonous suffix kills the tangibility that comes before it. That's my continuance of the evidence, and it's on etymologyonline.com. You can look it up. My statement on this thread is Jason Matthew Glass is the man. That's why I'm able to... <laughs> Thank you very much, Rodney. I appreciate that. So this is a mini class. So I'm not going to go like overboard uh, and give every single detail of it. 
Family. Okay. See, I've seen people do that as well. Logan Hunter would. I've seen people do that. Now, I mean, if that's what you choose to do, I mean, that's up to you. I think it's not. Uh, with my position, it's just not. I mean, I just don't go out and change the spelling of something. Modify the spelling of something just because. I want to use the word, and it's an L-Y, so I'm going to change the Y to an I. That's that's kind of, to me, that's immature, in my opinion. That's an opinion, okay? It just doesn't seem right to me. It doesn't seem correct. I need to have a reason why I do something. So that's why I would look up the word family, right? Look it up at Etymology Online and find out exactly What's going on with the particles of that word? And guess what happens when you look up family? If, if, for number three, third time, if you look it up and actually do the work, you will find L-Y does not function as a suffix in family. Therefore, with my closure, family is tangible contract when spelled with an L-Y. Because nowhere in an etymology dictionary do you see that it identifies L-Y as a suffix in any etymology dictionary. And I use several to cross-reference so that I can build a continuance of the fiction evidence to certify the facts that I'm sharing with you right now. Servants of a household. I see you looked it up. So that's 15th century. Home. One of a household from Old Norse. Man and wife. Domestic servant, husband, husband, wife. So basically, what I see with the word family is that you're basically a servant of a household. So if you belong to a domicile, you have a group of people, husband, wife, children. You're all servants of that construct, that biosphere, i.e. family. We're here to serve one another because we love one another. And we're here to do good things for one another. Serves. Not surf. Serve. S-E-R-V-E. I have no problem with that. Although I do stay away from using the word family just because people are kind of funny about that suffix L-Y. I will use tri tribe or clan in a lot of instances. But with my knowledge, family is positive performance with the L-Y. Just based upon the etymological research that I've done. But that's not the topic of this uh, mini class. This mini class, the topic is L-Y as a poisonous suffix which I've just shown you a continuous of the evidence of why it is so poisonous, why it can poison the tangibility into non-tangibility. How about connecting letters? That's changing letters. No, it is not changing letters, Logan. That is salvaging something that already existed. If you've watched those videos, and I'm sure you're referring to the AE in equal, which is a digraph, which I give closure to, that's something that already existed from a long time ago. I just salvaged it and brought it back so that we could use those things for positive performance. Now, of course, if you choose not to agree with that, then you and I are never going to contract. And that's cool, too. It's up to you. You as your authority, if indeed you are your own authority, I guess that depends upon what's in the copyright copy claim section of your live life claim. But me as my own authority, and my name is in the copyright copy claim section of my live life claim, um, this is what I do. I certify everything I do. I give a continuance to the evidence. I never expect you to take my word for it. That's why I've created over 300 videos on this channel. My gift to the public so that they can learn this on their own if they so choose. I've held nothing back. I don't bottleneck anything. I don't classify anything. I've used it in the public successfully for five years now. Never had a problem with it. Never 
had anyone give me any grief in the public when I use this, when I have to use it to stop a trespass. So that's why authority comes from knowledge, your closure on that knowledge, and your ability and skill to convey that knowledge to another individual. Authority does not come from someone else. It comes from here, your knowledge. Now, of course, with the exception, if you give authority to someone else to be over you and you're subordinate to them, that's your choice. That's your choice. But of course, again, we won't be contracting because I concentrate on the autonomous people who want to do things for themselves and want to get away from that fiction authoritarian concept of, oh, is it okay if I do this? Do I need so-and-so's thumbprint to go to the bathroom today? No, I don't do any of that stuff. This is for people with honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, and uh, want to do things on their own. So family doesn't have to be blood related. Well, it depends on how you give closure to that in your own construct. In your correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, dictionary, if you choose to, that it means, because it is a very personal term, right? If you choose for it to mean blood related, that's up to you. If I use it to mean something different in my dictionary, that's up to me. If you and I are going to contract and we're going to use that term as a fact, now you and I are going to have to, one of us is going to have to stop and correct, or we're going to have to come to some kind of compromise over the word, right? But that's no problem for people who have honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal, because we want to work together. We want to work it out. No one individual wants to be above another individual and be in charge. We all want to be equal. Rule one, rule equal. Not everybody wants that, though. What does a linguistic linguistic in language do? I guess you'd have to ask a linguist. I'm a lexicographer. You know, that's funny. I'm going to look up linguist. A master of languages. One who uses his tongue freely. From Proto-Indo-European root, D-N-G-H-U, tongue plus I-S-T, which I imagine is a, means contract. So a contract with a tongue. So, <laughs> so James, I guess that would make us all linguists, right? Because we're all masters of our own tongues, aren't we? So I'm also a linguist. I'm a linguist, a grammar tutor, and a lexicographer because I created my own dictionary. The continuance of the evidence is this. When you parse a word, you go back to the original nativity root meaning of the word, the oldest nativity root meaning that you can find. If you follow that rule, you will find a baseline with which you can base your syntax values on. And then if everyone follows that baseline, everyone's syntax and the reasons for doing the syntax that way will be consistent. If you go back to the earliest nativity root meaning of a word. Or we can use the old thing that Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller once said. If you put a zero in a multiplication problem, it zeroes the whole thing out. No matter how many positive performance numbers you have, if you have a zero in there, it zeroes it out. That's kind of what the LY does when used as a suffix. It kills the whole thing. So you create your own dictionary language for yourself. In a sense, Logan, yes. And if you want to contract with me, if anyone wants to contract with me, they would have to necessarily agree to that. If not, we're not contracting. And this is the whole psychological principle that we use with the fiction. Because if I can prove that I'm a master of my grammar, if I can give you closure on every single little thing that I'm doing in my document, 
but you can't, then I'm on this geometric level plane and you're not because you can't give closure to what you're doing. But I can. See, that's the whole psychological aspect of it. Why would someone want to use someone else's dictionary? Because if someone else uses someone else's dictionary, now they've given jurisdiction to the author of that dictionary. Author means authority, means you authored something. When you author something, you create it, right? You write it, you think it, you create it, you author it. And then by doing that, you authorize it. Now, you could do that for other people, too, if they submit to your authority. I, however, do not. I am my own author. And that's what I teach to other people, thus autonomy. All knowledge is from old dictionaries. Well, I can't prove all, Logan. But as I said it as earlier on, which you may not have been here, I cross-reference using any dictionary I can get my hands on, and I always use the rule of going back to the original, earliest nativity root meaning, which does not change. It does not change. The, the values only change the more the now space goes on. The further up in the timeline you go, the more things change. But if you go back and find that baseline of original nativity root meaning, that's where we stop to get our meanings. It's a baseline anyone can follow. So rather than being like, well, Jason said so, so it's that way. No, that's not what I do at all. I'm giving you, I'm sharing with you where I get my closure. And I'm sharing with you a baseline, a consistent baseline that anyone can use to come up with the same results that I do. That's called continuance of the evidence. That's called rule one, rule equal. I'm not bottlenecking anything. I'm not classifying anything. I'm sharing everything that I know. And I would challenge anyone, Logan, you or anyone else, to find me one other individual out there that's doing exactly what I'm doing, doing live streams, thousands of hours of videos, 300 plus videos, and teaches this to people all over the earth. I challenge you to find one individual who does that. Well, Rube, you'd have to look that up for yourself. That's not beyond, that's beyond the scope of this. But you are more than welcome to open up a window on your browser and uh, look it up. But those are two different words. Like, if you parse say that word, goes back to something different. So I highly recommend spend a few minutes looking these things up and tracing them back to their original nativity root meanings, as I keep saying. You can also go onto my Parse playlist where I detail exactly how to do that. Yes, it is very weird, Rube. It is very weird. I love it. You know, like I said, I've been doing this for five years now. This is like when I found this grammar in 2017, I was like, this is my calling. I'm going to learn this. And I did everything in my power to learn it. And I couldn't be more happy with the way it turned out. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't love it. Trust me. I mean, with all the potential headaches that I deal with every freaking day from people, mostly from the quantum grammar community who, who try to, you know, whatever, throw me off my square, but they never do. As you saw today, I mean, it's, I'm pretty calm. I'm pretty mellow about it. I do get very uh, firm about things at times, but I never get mad because I'm pretty confident in what I'm saying. There's no question that, that I have a, st a, a store of knowledge that I'm sharing with people because I want to help people that want to be helped genuinely. That's why I offer this, these streams. And that's why I also offer confidential workshops which if you want to apply for one, they're 60 minute video workshops. It's actually a real curriculum, just like if you would go to school, uh, one hour workshop, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Look at the pinned comment up there and apply for a workshop. And we'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation, which is free, meaning the only thing you have to invest in it is your now space. 
your video camera must be working and your audio must be working so we can look at each other face to face, eye to eye, and if, see if this is what you're serious about, if you really want to do this. I can explain it to you very quickly if you choose. All you got to do is email me. Or you can choose to take your own time and study the YouTube channel. So that is the closure on the LY. LY poisons a tangible contract word into a non-tangible contract word for a multitude of reasons. The main one being when you parse it and go back to the original nativity root meaning of it, it literally means dead corpse. Challenge you to find that in a colon David Eiffel Wynn colon Miller video. But you can find it right here. Thank you for watching. I appreciate everybody out there. Even that syntax rap guy. Thanks for coming on here and demonstrating exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, people who make claims but are either unable to prove the claim and then in the process of being unable to prove the claim or answer questions, they will not humble themselves enough to say they don't know. If I don't know something, I'll tell you I don't know it. And then I'll go look it up. Like someone said something about linguistics. I was like, oh, I never looked that up. I don't know. I'll go look it up. And then I looked it up and I found out. So it's very easy. If you don't know something, it's pretty easy to know it. You just got to know where to look. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. L-Y sounds like a lie. Alive. Well, a simple fix to that, Rube Star, is to use the word L-I-V-E, as in live life claim. Because live is a word, L-I-V-E, live, live. That's a word. So you don't even need to use a live. Thanks, again. Appreciate everybody who supports me, especially Rodney. I, I'm glad that you come on here, man. I appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, I'll end this in the, I'll end it this way. I hope everybody is, has peace, shaka, and uh, salute to everybody out there. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.